Hello, I'm Paul from Paul Ranson Art. Welcome to the studio. Today's classic Bob Ross painting is Rowboat on the Beach. It's a lovely scene for you to have a go at and one that I'll show you how to use a little template to transfer the image. Living near the coast, it's no wonder I'm happy painting the sea. So sit back and enjoy. Happy painting people. I'm using one of my paper practice canvases upon which I've stuck an oval. I've also put on some tape. This will be the horizon line and it's about an inch and a half below the center of the canvas. This is a wet on wet oil painting technique. So I'm going to start off with some Bob Ross liquid white oil paint and I'm going to be putting this over the whole canvas. But only a thin even coat. To make it easy to use I keep it in this little airtight pot. My brushes today are a Bob Ross two inch landscape brush. This is a lovely soft one and this slightly older one inch brush for doing some chores. I might use a filbert, a fan, a liner and a little detail brush. It's not a Bob Ross brush but handy to have. And of course a Bob Ross palette knife. I'm going to start off with my liquid white and this old one inch brush. I want a thin even coat above and below the tape and this needs to be worked in very well. But take care especially when you're going near the edge of the oval. You want to hang on to your canvas and make sure you don't brush out too vigorously. You might lift the edge of the oval up and then you'll have a little bit of a paint leak. On the tape, I tend to paint along the tape. Again, I don't want it lifting before I'm ready. Let's give my canvas a thin even coat. I'll do a bit of time lapse for this. There, finished. But is there enough on there? Too much or too little? could be a disaster. I made a whole video all about how to test your canvas. I'll leave a link to it down in the description. Watch this before you do this painting. I want to use this brush again, but it's full of liquid white. So give it a good dry clean. You don't have to use thinners every time you wash your brush. There, ready to go. On my palette today, I have titanium white, phthalo blue, phthalo green, midnight black, alizarin crimson, sap green, cad yellow, yellow ochre, and later on some red. Bob Ross's midnight black has a slightly lavender hue, but not all blacks do, so try and get the right one. I'm going to start off with cad yellow on that old brush again. Pull out and give it a good tap to distribute the paint through the bristles. And I'm going to start a little right of center and not sort of too low down. I'm going to make a little rough circle of bright yellow. I want to glow in my sky. And notice I'm using little crisscrosses and creating little rings of color. Make sure the edges are nice and broken. Don't bother cleaning the brush. Go straight into yellow ochre. And again, little crisscrosses. But see how I get these colors to shake hands. I don't want hard edges. You'll see why when you come to blend it out, if you paint things too mechanically and too carefully, it gets very difficult to blend things and you end up painting what looks to be a fried egg, but not one that I'd eat. Next, I'm going to mix some titanium white and some phthalo green, again on the same dirty brush. This will give me a nice minty green color for my sky. I know that sounds a bit strange, but it actually works very well. For this seascape, I'm going to take small samples on my brush and compare it to my painting until I get the shade of green that I'm looking for. Add a little more white, add a little more phthalo green and blend it on the brush. Now, let's see what it looks like on the painting. Remember, there's liquid white on the canvas. That'll dilute your color as well. So, if you're not sure, make little adjustments as you go. Next, I'm going to tone my color down by taking just a tiny amount of the midnight black. Just a hint. I only want to gray the color slightly. And as you can see, it actually goes a sort of a dull blue color. And I'll add more phthalo blue later on.
Now for that touch of Sado Blue. But be careful, it's a very strong colour and it'll turn your sky bright electric blue. So add a small amount, test it on your painting and then make adjustments. But again, this is all mixed on the brush and then added to the extreme edges of the oval. Time to change brushes. I'm going to start using the big two inch landscape brush. And the first thing is to add some titanium white to the corner of the brush. Add a good amount, but you can always add more later on if you didn't get enough the first time round. Now, time to blend our sky. Remember, keep the corner with the white paint on it to the center of the painting at all times. And we'll make circles round and round and round and then slowly work out but don't flip the brush over. Now, let's begin. Use firm brush strokes and really pound on that canvas. It's like beating a little drum. And go round and round and round. And as you do, you'll blend those colors together. Cadmium yellow will slowly blend into the yellow ochre. And then once you're happy, start moving out. So you go between the yellow ochre and the thalo green white mix, and so on and so forth. And then, just like magic, you'll start creating some little rays of light, just like sunlight. Once you reach the outer edges of the oval, don't be tempted to go back to the centre again. If you enjoy my tutorials and you want to show your appreciation, consider giving me a like. That's a thumbs up. You can subscribe and ring the little bell and even leave a comment. It's all free, but it really helps to grow my channel. If you want to do a bit more, you can buy me a coffee. I actually use the money to buy new materials for the next video. Thank you. Time to add a sun to my sky. I'm going to use my finger and a little bit of this off-white paint. Just a little dab and make a small round circle of light for a sun. Go around several times and soften the edges. And if it dulls, you can always add a little more. I usually do at least two layers, but you make your sun as bright as you want. I want to use this two inch brush to blend my sky and I'm going to dry clean it thoroughly. I'm going to use just the very sides of the brush very, very gently across that sunshine just to soften the edges. One last time. Let's add some clouds. I'm going to use that two inch brush and a little bit of the final blue mixture from the sky and just give my brush a firm tap. Let the bristles slide. Now think about the position a little bit lower than the sun on that right hand side with the brush angled slightly down. Don't go in with the brush too steep. If it's too steep, it won't leave any paint behind. So drop the handle about 45 degrees and just gently tap. We're looking for soft, distant clouds. I'll add a few more clouds on this top left hand side, just above the sun. Here's a top tip for you. Careful not to paint four fingers and a thumb. It's easy done. Now dry clean that two inch brush one more time. I just want to blend these clouds very gently. Use the sides of the brush they're the softest and with hardly any pressure just gently draw the brush along the clouds this just stretches them out and makes them nice and soft don't overdo it they'll just blend in especially to the sun so avoid that area using my filbert brush i want to add some headlands to my little seascape so i take some more of that blue gray cloud color and add a little white to it. Things that are further away in our painting tend to be much paler. Let's try a little sample. Well, that's just too pale. I practically can't see it. So I'm gonna adjust my color a little darker and try that much better. I'm gonna add the distant headland and I'm gonna keep it quite small. Remember? Things further away are small and don't have any detail. A 
I'll make this next layer slightly darker and overlapping the first one. For this closest headland, I'm going to add a touch of midnight black. This wants to be darkest and with a little bit more detail. So I let my brush just drag and bump. And as you can see, just the merest suggestion of detail here and there, but they're all quite far away. I dry clean my filbert brush and I'm going to take a little white and maybe just a hint of yellow ochre for a highlight. Again, just a suggestion of light falling on top of the headlands, but just a touch. I hold my brush loosely and use it like a palette knife. Just let the paint break. Where it touches, it sticks, but don't add too much. Just a hint of detail is all you need. When you finish your headlands, it's time to pull off the tape, revealing a nice straight horizon line. I've gone back to my one inch brush and I've gone back into the sky colour again. It's a mixture of blues and greens and a little bit of white, a real mixture. But this is perfect for the sea and I'm going to just block this in. Now don't forget, there's a little piece of dry canvas. So take your brush, lay it on its side, pick up a little liquid white and just work up to the edge of the sky. Be careful here, but if you do just clip the sky, don't worry. There's a little fix coming up when we add the waves. As I work down my canvas, I like to drop in extra little bits of color, a little extra blue, a little extra green. These will add a little bit of extra movement to the seascape but save the last little bit for a beach. For my waves, I'm going to be using this titanium white paint with a little bit of yellow ochre mixed in. It's off-white. I don't want anything too bright. Spread it out, nice and flat. Gather up a little roll of paint. Hold the palette knife with your finger on the back of the knife and with firm pressure, slide the knife along, leaving just a little bead of paint. This is a distant wave, so there's no detail. You can also use this first wave to cover up any little mishaps you had when you painted that first sea colour. The waves in the distance tend to be tightly grouped together, so you want smaller gaps. Allow the gaps to grow as you come down to the bottom of the painting. So, starting at roughly middle, Firm pressure and another little roll of paint. Press and slide the knife along. Don't worry if there are little breaks and gaps. It looks more natural. For this third wave, I'm using a slightly bigger roll of paint and I saw backwards and forwards with my knife a little more. I don't want a very straight wave. I want one a bit more character. Now, let's add a little bit of shadow it's the same colour I used on the headlands. This tucks in under the edge of my wave. The sunlight is behind the waves and the waves form a shadow on the water in front of them. a bigger gap and the biggest wave of all. So a slightly bigger roll of paint again. Notice how I get my knife to bend and dip and break the paint. And again, a bigger shadow. Everything getting slightly larger. Blend this in well into the sea and think about the shape of the water as it rises up to the crest of the wave. I have a neat little trick to show you next how to add a little bit of splash and crash. Take a clean palette knife 
and just where that fat bead of paint is, I'm going to flip it over. That little mark adds energy to your painting. It makes your wave come alive. You can even do some sound effects if you want. Yeah, sound effects are essential. Let's add a few thin skinny little bits of highlighting on the sea. This is shallow water. I'll add little bits of shading here and there and any that are a little too strong I can rub out. I can even put a few little bits of detail between the big waves. Now, time to add a rowboat and my next top tip. Start with a piece of paper, back of an envelope will do, and draw yourself a figure eight, nice and long. There we are. That's the shape of your rowboat. This is the bow, the pointy end, and this is the stern. Just add one more line and we have the completed shape. If I shade this area, you'll see the boat starting to emerge. Shadow there and a shadow there. Let's add a few planks and a rope to tie it up. And there you have it, a rowboat. I drew my rowboat to fit the scale of my painting. Now I can hold one beside the area that I want to draw it. And with the end of a paintbrush, I can sketch it. And if I don't like it, I can rub it out and sketch it again. I can sketch it as many times as I like until I can get it the way I want it to look. This way, you can have as many goes as you like. There you go. Done. Time to mix up a new colour. I'm going to take some alizarin crimson and some sap green, about equal parts. This makes a lovely warm brown colour for the planks on my rowboat. I could use a filbert brush to paint my boat, but luckily I have a small detail brush, cheap and inexpensive, and that's what I'm going to use. Let's take a little of this brown colour and work through our rowboat section by section, starting with the centre. Just a nice dark brown chocolate colour. We'll add some black now and then for darker shadows, maybe on the bow at the front. For the planks on the side of my rowboat, I want a slightly lighter brown colour. I take a little titanium white to make a soft brown colour. I want to darken the back or transom area of my rowboat. I'll add a little more midnight black to make my rowboat look a bit more 3D or three dimensional. I want to add some detail to my boat. And for this, I'll need a liner brush and thin my paint down. Just got some odorless thinners in a little jar. I want this dark brown color to be thin, just like ink, not too runny though. I want to add, firstly, a little detail to the bow, round here, and then I'm going to add some planks to the side. Don't worry if you haven't got a steady hand, and these aren't perfect, it's just a small detail. I want to add a little highlight to the top edge of this boat. So I've thinned out some white and some yellow ochre to make a sort of pale gold colour. Anywhere I think the light would strike and shine. It also helps to define the edge of the boat against the darker centre. These small touches of highlight really help your boat shine. Here and there, on the edge of planks as well. Now for a reflection. This doesn't have to be too carefully done. Just something that's an approximate mirror image is fine. We'll be brushing down and across with that nice two inch brush. So this is gonna get quite blurred. I'll be adding water lines and some ripples across it as well. So don't fret too much about getting this to look perfect. Now, super gentle with this. Just 
the merest little bit of pressure pull down and gently across. We just want to distort it a little. Don't blend it in too much. Back to my palette knife and a little roll of that off-white paint. And just where the boat meets the water, add a little ripple. Make sure the ripples go right to the very edge of the boat so we don't leave a little gap between the boat and the background water. Time to add a beach to our painting. We're almost on the home stretch. I want a nice light gold colour. I'm going to use some titanium white and some yellow ochre. Even a touch of Christmas brown. There. Now, block in the beach and allow these colours to blend with the sea. It'll make a sort of greenish tone, but that'll work just fine. We don't want a hard edge. Darken it to the right and to the left a little bit. I'm going to put some grasses there and they need a little bit of a shadow. Even add a few little footprints. I used a little bit of my Christmas brown for this, just to give it a little bit more character. I'm going to brush mix some sap green and some cad yellow with a drop of thinners. Hold the brush well back and paint with just the very tip. Use nice lifting upward strokes to create these grasses. These look a little pale. I think they need a few darker ones. So I add a little bit of midnight black to that mixture. Let these grow quite tall. It helps with perspective and pushes the boat further back in the painting. Now for some seagulls. Just paint little eyebrows. Off-white colour is perfect. Just don't paint M birds like a McDonald's sign. They just don't look right. Seagulls soar. I put little bits of grey on their wingtips to help them stand out against a pastel sky. I'll fill out a little drop of red paint for a signature and my version of Bob Ross's rowboat on a beach is done. Time to peel off the oval. But hang on. What's this? Your boat will float away. Get a rope and put a stake in the ground. Whew, that was a near thing. We'd be stranded here for ages. Finally, the big reveal. Peel this off carefully from your painting. As you can see, I had a little mishap and my mount pulled off a little bit of the grey gesso, but it was an easy fix. Just a little touch up. If you want to paint a nice big crashing wave, there's another video for you to watch just here. Ooh, and don't forget, like, subscribe and share. Happy Robo Painting, everyone. <laughs>